I'm Frank Proto, a chef instructor at the Institute of Culinary Education, and this is Every Way to Cut Garlic. I'm talking chopping, slicing, grating, mincing, smashing, pressing, and even some more. Welcome to Garlic 101. So garlic in the culinary world is used as an aromatic, right? We mainly use it as a flavor enhancer. How you handle it and how you cut it is gonna make all the difference on how much flavor you get out of your garlic. This is a bulb of garlic, if you haven't seen one before. I like to pick garlic bulbs that are really firm. If it feels really light and spongy, that means it's starting to grow and you'll start to see little green sprouts. So basically that flavor that's in the garlic is disappearing and it's giving its energy to the sprouts. You can use garlic that's starting to sprout. It's just gonna be a little muted. It's not gonna be as strong. So heavy for its size, nice and firm. Before you cut your garlic, you gotta peel it. And this is how I do it. I like to rest it on a counter, get the palm of my hand, put my body weight on it. You're doing a little garlic CPR, and then you get your cloves that are nice and free from the head. From this point, we have to peel our cloves of garlic. And there's lots of different ways of doing this. Here's a few. First way is with your hands. You can just get in there with your hands and peel them away. I got lucky with this head of garlic because the skin started to naturally separate. For the most part, that doesn't happen all the time. The second way I do it is with a paring knife. With the paring knife, it's a little more time consuming, a little more labor intensive. Usually what I do with this is I'll cut off that root end, and then you kind of got to make a little incision and got to peel it off. You got to be a little more careful. But for the most part, it comes off fairly easy. You just have to make sure you don't leave any little skin on. So that's with a paring knife. Another way to peel your garlic is the two bowl method. The first time I remember seeing this method is on Martha Stewart. I find it about 70% effective. So I'm just gonna take my garlic cloves, throw them in a bowl, take the other bowl. It helps that they have lips like this. Put it together and give it a shake. Okay, let's see how we did. Okay, look at that. There's always a few in there that don't get peeled. That's why I say this is about 70% effective. Thanks, Martha. Similar to the bowl method is the jar method or the TikTok method. There's a ton of cooking hacks on TikTok nowadays. You're bound to find one that works. And by the way, you can follow me at Proto Cooks on TikTok. To be honest with you, I've never really tried this. I'm not sure it's gonna work, but I assume it will. If you can get the lid on. Try not to throw it across the room. All right, maybe not as successful as the bowl method, but we got some peeled garlic. Way to go, TikTok. Our cloves are peeled, time to cut. The main idea with garlic is the more you process or chop it, the stronger it gets. Basically, a whole clove is about a zero or a one, and as we go up the line to fine chopped, we're getting to like a, a 10. You smell like garlic, you taste like garlic, uh, it comes out of your pores. Whole cloves. Sometimes when we cook with garlic, we don't cut it at all. My grandmother did not like to eat garlic, but she did like the flavor. So she would just take a couple of whole cloves, throw it in the oil, flavor the oil with garlic, and then take them out. And basically on a flavor scale, this is a zero. You don't get a ton of flavor out of a whole clove of garlic if you just saute it. Crushed garlic. Get your clove of garlic on the board and give it a light tap. That's it. Flavor scale, we get a little more garlic flavor, probably like a two. When we crush it, it doesn't release all the volatile compounds, it just leaves it really mellow. I tend to use this in sauces like a meat sauce or a tomato sauce that cooks for a long time. I don't want my tomato sauce to be super garlic forward, but I do want the sweetness and the mellowness of a long cooked piece of garlic. Slicing. Another way to cut garlic is to slice. I use this whenever I do something like mussels or something that I want to see the garlic in. It's not gonna melt away, it's not that thin. Garlic stays fairly mellow. On a flavor scale, I'd give this about a five or a six. Mandolin. The mandolin is similar to the knife, but you're living a little dangerously with it. The newer modern ones have this nice screw and we could lower the blade and then we grab our clove of garlic and we can run it over here. Just try not to cut your fingers. When you get down to here, don't cut any more. From this, you get really nice even slices, a little bit better than the knife. Razor blade. Now, if you've seen Goodfellas, they're in prison, 
they have a clove of garlic, they're making tomato sauce, and they get one of these razor blades out. They're slicing the garlic super thin with this, almost paper thin. And that does two things, right? It gives us a mellow garlic flavor, and it kind of melts into the sauce, so you don't have chunks of garlic in your sauce. So let's give it a shot. I've never done this before. I'm gonna try not to cut myself. Oh, look at that. That is a sharp blade. I can imagine this makes delicious pasta. On the flavor scale, I'd say this is about a four. Rough chop. So when I rough chop garlic, I give it a little whack with the side of the knife. I make sure that this little stem end is gone first. It's not good eating. I give it a little whack, and then I just run my knife through it so I have fairly even chopped garlic, but not super fine. This is something I use if I'm putting in meatballs or into stuffings. I like to see a little bit of garlic. I like to have a little bit stronger flavor because there's a lot of bland ingredients in it. Flavor scale, we'll get into a six. Mincing. I also call this the French way of cutting garlic, uh, which is a little more dainty, a little more fine. So I get a clove of garlic, and what I'm gonna do is just kinda cut it through, and then we're gonna cut across once or twice, and then we have our nice mince. I find that people will use this for like sauteing, they'll use it in soups, sauces, stocks, in salad dressings and stuff like that. On the flavor scale, we're getting to an eight or a nine. We're getting a lot of pungent garlic flavors here. For the most part, I don't cut garlic this much. I am on the side of my grandmother where the garlic should be a kind of like background flavor. Totally up to you. If you wanna mince your garlic, go for it, but I don't really use minced garlic. Grated. I think the best way to grate garlic is with a microplane. So a microplane is a kitchen tool that for about 15, 20 years has been in the professional kitchen. And basically what it is, is a carpenter's rasp. Someone went into a carpentry shop that was a chef and said, hey, wait a second. I might be able to grate things with this. I like to microplane or grate my garlic over a bowl. Just because trying to clean this up off the cutting board is a real problem. You lose a lot of the oil to the cutting board. So if you do it over a bowl, it's a lot easier to catch. Just like the mandolin, this microplane can cut you, so be really careful. You'll see this used in Caesar dressings. You'll see this used in anywhere where you want a real spicy garlic punch. This on the flavor scale is hopping out at nine, maybe even close to 10 at this point. Just like the minced, I don't use this a lot. I think it's a little too much. And if you eat garlic like this, be warned, people might not want to be close to you. Garlic press. This is something that has been around forever. I remember back in the 80s when I was a kid, my parents had one. They used this for Caesar salads all the time. It's super easy to use, a little harder to clean. Just drop your clove in there and just give it a squeeze. You'll notice that when you do this, you get a ton of liquid and juice from it. For the most part, I don't use this because on the flavor scale of garlic, this is an 11. Do not underestimate the power of pressed garlic. Pre-chopped, AKA in the jar. This is pre-chopped jarred garlic, and in my opinion, it's absolute garbage. You should never use it. It just smells like chemicals. It's way too strong. It flavors everything with this weird kind of off-putting garlic flavor. I think Anthony Bourdain said it best, too lazy to peel fresh garlic. You don't deserve to eat garlic. On a flavor scale of zero to 10, jarred garlic is garbage. Don't use it. Roasted. I don't think any garlic video would be complete without talking about roasted garlic. Roasted garlic is probably the most mellow garlic you can get, and there's two ways that you can do this. You can take a whole clove, cut the top off, put a little oil, salt, and pepper, wrap it in foil, and roast it in the oven until it's soft. But the way I like to do it is take peeled cloves of garlic, put them in a pot, cover them with a neutral oil, and just let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes. On a flavor scale, this is pretty much like a two or three without the pungency. There's really no bite to it. You can spread it on bread, eat it with a piece of cheese, and you're not gonna have like crazy garlic breath the next day. It's just gonna be a nice, nutty, mellow garlic flavor. I hope you learned a little something about garlic today. And at the end of the day, it's your dish. You cut the garlic how you want it. Just please, 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 don't use the stuff in the jar, cut it fresh. Or I'm gonna come to your house, I'm gonna take your jar, and I'll throw out the window. <laughs> this is a garlic gadget that I know was reviewed on Well Equipped. Ooh, it's fun to play with. We put a clove of garlic in, and you roll it around. It looks like the garlic is more powerful than the machine here. All right, let's see how we did. Uh, it's pretty ineffective. On a flavor scale, I'd probably give this a five or a six. It's probably fairly strong. But as far as effectiveness goes and having to clean this darn thing, uh, I give it a zero.